Hi there and welcome to Hegarty Maths. It's Mr. Arnold here and in this video we're going to be looking at sketching functions too. It's all based around core maths for A-level but is applicable to most other maths modules. Okie doke, so in this video we're going to be looking mainly at the reciprocal function. So what is the reciprocal function? Well, it takes the form y equals some number a divided by x, where a is an where a is any number at all. Now for the majority of this video I'm going to be using Desmos to demonstrate uh, various different graphs. So let's take a look and see what the reciprocal function looks like. So here we have Desmos. You can open this up to desmos.com and just launch the calculator. It works in your browser. And I've typed in the reciprocal function here, y equals a over x. And I've just started by setting the value of a equal to 1. So, in other words, it's y equals 1 over x. That's what you'll see right off the bat. And we end up with a function like this. So, it goes off up to infinity. Let's just zoom out in the y direction. And you might see that it looks like it's getting closer and closer and closer to the axis. But it actually never crosses the axis. And that's called an asymptote. I'll talk about them in a little bit. Let's see what happens as the value of a increases and decreases. Let's see what happens to the function. So, we might have noticed there that the function flipped around when a became negative. And when a becomes positive, it goes in the other direction. And as a gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the graph seems to get further and further away from zero. And as a gets more and more negative, again, it gets further and further away from zero. So let's just summarize that. So when a is positive, the function will look something like this. So I'm going to do a quick sketch. When a is positive, so if a is greater than zero, we get a function that looks something like this, where it curves around like this in the first quadrant and will get closer and closer and closer to zero but never actually touch it. And we get a mirror image on in the third quadrant as well. So it will get closer and closer and closer to the axis but it will never, ever, ever touch it. And these are what we call asymptotes. So that's when a is bigger than zero. Let's have a look at when a is less than zero. Try that again. Okay, look. So, when a was less than zero, we ended up with a function that looked something like this. So it came down in this direction and curved around and again it got closer and closer to the x-axis but it will never ever touch it. And we had the mirror image here where it's, it gets closer and closer to the y-axis but never ever touches it, curves around and then approaches the x-axis but again will never ever ever touch it. Now let's just examine why that happens. This function here on the right is when a is less than zero. Okay, so why does the function never cross the axis? Well, let's suppose, let's suppose x is equal to zero. So let x equal zero. Then we get a function that's y equals a divided by zero. And we all know the 11th commandment in mathematics is that you're not allowed to divide by zero. So it's undefined, undefined at x equal to zero. So it's undefined when x is zero because we're not allowed to divide by zero. And again, if I let y equals 0. Let's see what happens to our function. We end up with 0 equals a over x. And it doesn't matter what value of x we take, 
when I cross multiply, I'm going to end up with zero. So it's also undefined for y equal to zero. And if, if uh, a function is undefined at a particular point or a particular line, that's what we call an asymptote. So we have an asymptote here. I'll make that smaller in a second. There's an asymptote there. And there's an asymptote here. And the function, as I said, will get closer and closer and closer to those axes, but will never, ever cross it. So we've got asymptotes here and here. And the same applies for the other function. So let's duplicate that, take it over. So we've got an asymptote on the x-axis. That's where it's undefined. An asymptote is a line that the graph will never ever cross or where it's undefined. Okay, so we've got an asymptote where x equals zero and y equals zero. Okay, let's have a look at some examples where we might be asked to sketch some of these functions. So, suppose I'm asked to sketch these functions on the y-axis, or on the same axis, should I say. So, let's scroll down a bit. Um, we'll start by a quick sketch of the axes, like so. This is a positive value for a, which means the function is going to look something like this. And the same over here. And we have another positive value of A, but we have to think about this one. A is smaller. And if you remember, as A gets bigger and bigger, as A gets bigger and bigger, it moves further and further away from the origin. So we need to reflect that in our graph. That means this is a smaller value of A, so it's going to be closer to the origin. So we'll have something like this. And we end up with the same mirror image on the other side. And you might write down um, both graphs undefined at x equal to zero and y equal to zero. And you also might label graphs. So this is the graph of 3 over x, should I say y equals 3 over x, and the red graph is the graph y equals 4 over x. Okay, let's have a look at our second example now. We want to sketch these two functions on the same axis. So, very similar to the last question. So I'll start by putting down our x and y axis. Now, what we need to pay attention to is the fact that it's negative, which means it's going to be up in the second and four, fourth quadrant. Let's redo that so it looks a bit better. something like this and going off and the mirror image down this end and remember it will never cross the axes and that's the function y equals negative 6 over x and remember as it gets more and more negative or closer to negative infinity 
the graph gets further away from the origin, which means that negative 3 over x is going to be, albeit a little bit closer, but it still has the same shape and it will still never cross the axis. It's undefined on the x and y axis. But it still has the same shape. Okay, and that is the graph of y equals negative 3 over x. Okay, let's take a look at another type of example. Okay, so example 3. We're looking to sketch these functions on the same axis and find a point of intersection. So, let's start by drawing our axes, like so. Now this function here is a quadratic function because we know the highest power of x is going to be x squared. And I also know the solutions are going to be where x is 0 and x is 3. So let's mark them. And x is 0 and x is 3. And it's a quadratic where the highest power of x is positive, so it's going to come down like this, and then pass up through that 3 and go on to infinity. Okay, so that's one function done. Very straightforward based on the last video. Let's do the other function. Um, we've got x squared times 1 subtract x. Now this is a cubic function because the highest power of x is going to be x cubed. But it's also negative, which means it comes from the top and heads in this direction. Now it's a cubic. So we would expect two turning points. Well, I know one of the solutions will be when x is equal to 0. Let's just check that. We get 0 times 1 minus 0 will give me a solution of 0. So that's good. So I know that this is one of the solutions, and it's repeated because it's x squared. And then the other solution is where x is equal to 1. So if I say y equals 1 squared times 1 subtract 1, well this part is going to be 0, so y will equal 0 as well. So when x is 1, y is 0. Okay, what does this look like? Well our function comes down, it will just touch this point at 0, 0 and then come back up because it's a repeated route and then it's going to curve back down and pass through there and go on to infinity so we need to find this other value here now how might we go and find that Okay, so one thing that we might need to do before we actually finish this is just modify this curve there because cubic functions are always steeper than quadratic functions. So we do have, and that shouldn't be a wave, but we do have another point of intersection there, call it A, we have a point of intersection here, call it B, and a third point of intersection here, call it C. Now we have one of them already, 0, 0. That's a fairly easy one to find. Let's find the others. What we do is we let the two functions equal each other. So let this equal this. So we get x times x subtract 3 equals x squared times 1 subtract x. Okay, let's expand this out. x squared subtract 3x equals x cubed subtract sorry x squared subtract x cubed okay let's tidy up let's take everything to the left hand side we get x cubed subtract 3x must be equal to 0 and factor out the x x into x squared minus 3 must equal 0. So there's one of the values. Obviously when x is 0, the answer is 0. 
but then that also means that x squared subtract 3 must equal 0, which means that x squared must equal 3, which means the values of x that give a um, point of intersection will be plus or minus root 3. So the values of x are plus or minus root 3, and then we can go back to either equation and substitute in. I'm going to substitute back in here. So we've got y equals, remember we've got, let's sub x equal to positive root 3 in. So we get root 3 times root 3 subtract 3, which gives us root 3 times root 3 is 3 subtract 3 root 3. So now we have a second point of intersection and that's where x is root 3 and y is 3 subtract 3 root 3. So we're substituting in here. That's one value. Let's substitute back in x equals negative root 3. And we can sum it back into either function. So negative root 3. So we get y equals negative root 3 times negative root 3 subtract 3 which means that y equals 3 negative root 3 times negative root 3 is just 3 plus 3 root 3 so the other solution is when x is negative root 3 the value of y will be 3 plus 3 root 3 and they are three points of intersection a b and c okay let's have a look at another example okay we need to sketch these functions on the same axis and find a point of intersection or any points of intersection all right the first thing i'm going to do is let the two expressions equal each other better off finding the point of intersection first We set the two expressions equal to each other. Okay, let's expand this out. We get x cubed subtract 2x squared subtract x and then add the 2 and that would equal 14x plus 2. Okay, let's tidy this up. So I'll take everything to the left hand side. We get x cubed subtract 2 x squared subtract 15x and that must be equal to 0. Now this is looking a bit more familiar. Factor out an x and we get x squared subtract 2x subtract 15 must equal 0. I now, I now see a quadratic here so I'm going to factorise that as well so we end up with x times, now two numbers that multiply to make negative 15 will add to make negative 2, negative 5, and positive 3. And that must equal 0. So the solutions, the solutions are where x equals 0, so if x is 0, all of this becomes 0. When x equals 5, if I put 5 in here, all of this becomes 0 and x equals negative 3. Okay, now that we have those, let's also get the um, get the y value. So when x is 0, and I can substitute back into either equation, it doesn't matter. So when x is 0, y is 2. When x is 5, and um, 5 times 14 is 70, uh, y will be equal to 72. And when x is negative 3, that's going to give me negative 42, um, so y will be negative 40. So they're the coordinates of all the points of intersection. Okay, so 
quick sketch. Okay, um, now, before I sketch these curves, I'm also going to take a look at this expression here. y equals x squared minus 1 times x minus 2. So I'll just write it here in blue. x squared subtract 1 times x minus 2. In order to get the solutions to this, um, I can see that this is actually the difference of two squares. So we can factorize that even more x plus 1 times x minus 1 and that's times by x minus 2 so this expression is the same as this expression which means the solutions are negative 1 1 and negative 2 so we've got negative 1 1 and negative 2 sorry 2 now it's a positive cubic, which means it goes from the bottom left to the top right. And we have a, um, it will cross also at 0 and 2, because that's a point of intersection. 0, 2, so where x is 0 and y is 2, it's going to cross there. That's negative 1, that's 1, and that's 2. Okay, let's see what this looks like now. So, coming up from the bottom, it's going to pass up through there and then back down and then turn again and then go off up to infinity. So, like so. And then the other equation is y equals 14x plus 2 which is going to be a straight line. So y equals 14x plus 2. Let me just get the colour of this right. We'll do it in red. Okay. So something like that. And let's get the points of intersection all sorted. So the points of intersection are 0 and 2. So here. 0, 2. Um, we had 5 and 72. So, in fact, I would need a much, much bigger graph. This would go off in this direction. And then the graph would come up here and we'd have 5 and 72. And then negative 3 and negative 40. So somewhere down here, negative 3. Again, it's only a sketch. doesn't need to be perfectly accurate. When x is negative 3, y will be negative 40. As I said, the other value is up here somewhere. I'm just not able to fit it on the picture. Okay, one more example. So I need to sketch these functions on the same axis and find the points of intersection. So let's start again by letting the two expressions equal each other. So let 1 over x be equal to negative x times x subtract 1 squared. Okay, right off the bat, I'm going to multiply across by, um, by x. So we get 1 equals negative x squared times x minus 1 to be squared. And let's take everything to one side. Um, we're going to get 1 plus x squared times x subtract 1 to be squared will be equal to 0. Now, I can see something immediately here. Suppose I was to take that neg uh, the 1 over to the other side. So subtract 1 from both sides, we get x squared times x minus 1 to be squared will equal negative 1. Well, x squared times x plus 1 all squared, what I might be able to do is take the square root. So, so if I take the square root, we get x times x minus 1 would equal the square root of negative 1. And you're, um, we'd need a 
imaginary numbers to take the square root of a negative number, so no solutions. No solutions as we're trying to take the square root of a negative number. Okay, let's sketch this. So something like this. Now one over x, as we've discussed, looks something like that. Remember there's an asymptote where at the y-axis, and then we get the mirror image going like this. Now the other equation um, is going to be a cubic and it's going to be negative, negative cubic, which means it comes down in this direction. Now where will it cross the axes? It'll cross the axes at, let me see, uh, x subtract 1 to be squared is going to be uh, 1 repeated when x is 1, now it repeats there and when x is 0, so if it's coming down it will pass through 0, 0 it will come up and touch that and then go off to infinity like so and hence we've sketched the two functions y equals negative x times x subtract 1 to be squared and then the other one is y equals 1 over x. And there's no solutions. The two graphs will never, ever cross. And that's down to the fact that when I tried to solve the two of them equal to each other, I needed to take the square root of a negative number. Okay, that's it for that video. Hopefully you found it useful. It's tricky stuff. I do recommend playing around on Desmos to get an idea of what the functions might look like. It is free software. And I'll be back again with another video soon. So... All the best and take it easy.